Hi, this is Bill, and uh, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, how I set up the Thunder Charge Monitor software uh, with my computer. Uh, one of the problems that I'm experiencing is uh, under the serial ports, there's a, a drop down selection list here, and if I select the COM6 port, which is what's currently configured for my charger, it does not want to hold the selection. So if I, if I were to select uh, COM6 and then try to hit connect over here, it, it tells me to select my port. So uh, one thing that I've had to do in order to get around that is I have to use my device manager settings and then um, I have to temporarily disable my COM1 uh, port and then after I disable that port that's which it's done here then when I come back over here to the port then the COM6 port is now available and then I can connect to it but if you notice I, I didn't click it quick enough so what I have to do is I have to hit the down arrow on the on the on the port uh, and then as soon as I hit the down arrow key on the keyboard I have to quick very quickly click the connect button and then once I do that that where everything else works fine now there's a link I'm going to provide on this video that shows how I got the software installed and everything that I've done I just followed everything to a T uh, as far as that's concerned. Now, coming back over here, um, what I'm going to show here is, is you've got my uh, AC6 charger plugged in, and then I have the USB uh, cord running all the way down to my PC. It's plugged into the PC, and then over here I've got a battery pack that's hooked up, and I've got it hooked up uh, in parallel with a bulb discharger. So the idea is that uh, when I dis uh, when I set up the discharge through the char this charger, it's set up to a really low setting uh, for 0.1 amps and then the bulk of the discharge is going to be coming through the bulb discharger that I have here at 30 amps. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up to start the discharge cycle. Uh, immediately after setting up the discharge, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the bulb discharger and then it should record the data back over here on the screen and I'll show you. Go ahead and set this up here briefly. Okay, the discharge has begun. Now I'll go ahead and plug the bulb discharger in and get a high discharge going. And now I'm drawing a 30 amp discharge. And then we'll come over here back to the screen. And then now we can see that it's recording the discharge. Now this should take about 10 minutes to discharge. And I'm going to go ahead and pause um, the, uh, the screen here momentarily and then I'll come back and show you how I collect that data and, um, and import that into an Excel spreadsheet and make better use of that information here shortly. Okay, um, I just finished uh, the discharge using my bulb discharger and I manually uh, had to disconnect the battery after visually seeing that the voltage under load dropped just a hair below 6.6 .6 volts on a two cell pack. Um, and then uh, you, as you can see here, the, uh, as it started to drop, the uh, cell number one and cell number two started uh, not to, to lose its balance uh, between the cells. Uh, so it just tells me that 6.6 .6 volts seems to be a good, a good point to actually stop uh, the, the measurement. And you can see that here in the red line here is the voltage, which is really the only one that I'm interested in. The current and the capacity are really kind of moot and I'm not uh, recording any external temperatures as well. So this is really the only uh, piece of information that I'm interested in. What, uh, what, I, what I can do now in order to collect this data is to use this export button and I'm not going to give a big uh, you know, explanation of how everything works. I'm just going to do uh, what works for me. Uh, and I just throw everything into a single resu results folder and this particular battery that I'm testing right here is going to be a Turnigy Nanotech and this is a two cell uh, what is this, a 65C? yeah, 65C and 6 amp pack so this exports it in a .xls format, so I'll go ahead and save that off. And once I've saved that out, now I can go ahead and 
go to my thunder log results and this is the result of the export that I just worked on and it's asking me if I want to convert it into a readable format we will say yes and then you can see that it logs the time here um, as well as the individual cell voltages between one and two and then uh, what I'm more interested in here is the battery voltage column here so uh, what I can also do is I can chart this information and I guess I can go ahead and go over here to another sheet and then um, what I can say is do like an insert and maybe do like a scatter chart here and once I select that uh, set up here then I can say okay go ahead and select the data uh, come back over here to the raw data and select the columns that I'm interested in which is the time and the battery voltage say okay and then uh, then I can see my, my data um, to make this a little bit more readable what I, what I might do is I might adjust the uh, uh, the access or the axes and I'm and say okay well let's go let's head say the minimum uh, since 6.6 .6 volts is really where I'm at um, or I'm more interested in is I'll say the minimum is six and then set the max to uh, maybe uh, let's see let's try with 7.5 or, or I'm sorry eight we'll start with that and then you can get to see a little bit more of the curve and you'll see where it spiked back up on the voltage over here and that was when I uh, disconnected the bulb discharger and so it was no longer under load and so then the voltage shot back up uh, so that is, that's information that's really not relevant uh, for what I'm looking uh, for, for my test so then I'll need to go over here and scroll down to the towards the end of my test results and you can see here how the voltage dropped all the way down to um, six point six volts right about here so this information so this data um, all the way so these last few elements of data I'm really not interested in capturing so I'll go ahead and delete that and then I can go back over here to the, the graph and you see that it kind of cleans that up a little bit so you can see where the voltage drops all the way down to 6.6 .6 volts and that concludes my test and that's pretty much um, how I have been collecting my data uh, thanks for watching